Hi everybody, this is Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. In this video, me and Mello want to talk to you guys about a single needle and multi-needle. If you are thinking about doing embroidery or you are thinking about getting a machine, I think you should uh, watch this video in its entirety because I'm going to cover the... Um, you know what you should be thinking about when you are thinking about purchasing one of these two machines either it's you know and i'm not talking about brand i'm talking about a single needle versus a multi-needle so let's get to it and let's go and talk about our single needle machine right now okay so let's talk about some single needle machines and this um, that, that way you guys can think about some of the things you should be considering okay now the single needle machine is usually the machine that a lot of people that are thinking about embroidery start with, okay? Um, one of the things about it that a lot of people like is it is very compact, it's small, it's something that doesn't require a lot of space, and it's something that can actually travel with you, okay? And they really are kind of easy to learn. There's really not much of a learning curve in order to use a single needle machine. They are very affordable. However, though, they do get pricey as well. So it really depends on the type of single needle machine that you are looking for. There are lots of people that run businesses using single needle machines, but it really depends on what it is that you want to do in embroidery and the type of products that you want to offer, okay? So let's um, talk a little bit more about the machine. Okay, it comes in two flavors, right? You can sometimes get a machine that just does strictly embroidery, or sometimes you can get something that's called a combo machine. Now, a combo machine is a machine very similar to the Brother SC 1900. The SE in front of the, the number 1900 means sewing and embroidery. So sometimes you can get a machine that has both functionalities, which is really great, especially for people that are like hobbyists or they have a little business, but it's just a very small business and, you know, they don't have a lot of space. So what's really great about the combo machines is that you, you just using one machine and it does both functions. It does the sewing and it also does the embroidery. If you get a machine that's just embroidery, that's it. You're only doing embroidery on that particular machine. Now, the prices do vary on, um, on all these machines. Um, usually the most affordable single needle machines are usually machines that only use the 4x4 or a 5x7 hoop. However, though, do know that just because your machine uses a 4x4 or a 5x7 five, uh, hoop, that doesn't mean that you're limited to that hoop. You can actually use something called a repositional hoop. Now, in order to use repositional hoops, you would have to have embroidery software. You'll have to know how to use it. Um, and what that does, actually, what it is, is it's kind of like taking your image and it's um, making it double the size, right? So like on the Brother SC1900, you can actually use a repositional hoop that's the size of a five by 12. And I do have a video and I'll, I'll you know, I'll link it um, on the video, on this video, so that way you guys can see how it's actually done. Um, and I'm sure on the five by, on, on those machines with a four by four, they have repositional hoops as well. Okay, so don't think that just because you got one of these machines that you're kind of limited to just the space of that hoop. That's not true. You can go a little bit bigger if you need to, okay? The other thing um, that I need to mention about these machines is the speed, okay? Um, depending on the machine you get, that, um, you know, you will want to pay attention to the speed of your embroidery because that's going to determine how quickly you can actually embroider something. The SC1900, the speed is 650 stitches per minute. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have gotten your hands on a Brother SC1950, you actually got more speed because the speed on those machines is actually 850 stitches per minute. Now, I don't know what the other brands speed are, but you know, I would look into it and see because usually you would want something that has the most speed as possible. 
Um, so that way you can get through your embroidery designs a lot more quicker. However, though, do keep in mind that if you start using certain specialty threads, like if you use metallic thread, you may have to slow down your machine. And also sometimes if you are embroidering a particular design that is kind of complex, you may want to slow down the machine as well, okay? So, you know, just something to think about, uh, you know, when you are looking at these machines is ask yourself about the speed and, um, you know, what kind of designs are you going to be doing and what kind of thread are you going to be using a lot? Are you going to use embroidery thread or do you plan on using a lot of metallic thread for a lot of the designs? You know, that will probably help your decision process a little bit. The other thing also to really consider is that when you're looking at these single machines, the designs of these single machines are flatbed. Now, flatbed means that just what you see right in front of me. It is completely flat. There is no arm, okay? So, depending on the products that you're going to be embroidering, that's kind of, um, you know, something to think about, okay? Because it's flat flat bed okay you're going to be embroidering things that are kind of like on a flat surface a lot you don't have an arm so things like um you know bags big bags might be something that may be a little difficult to hoop um you know they're not saying that they're not possible you can do it i mean some people what they do is they kind of like um undo some seams and try to get the surface that they want to embroider to excuse my dog he wants attention so anyway <laughs> you know some people what they do is they kind of like unsew some of the seams so that way they can go ahead and um get the the area that they want to embroider as flat as possible so they can put it on the hoop and stick it into the machine Another thing also is like, let's say baseball hats, they do sell um, certain hoops that you can use with these types of machines. They're kind of like hat hoops and it kind of, you know, helps you to um, put the hat into a more flatter surface so that way you can stick it into the machine and in water. So that is something that, um, that you know you want to think about as well. Now these flatbed machines are very easy to service as well. They, you know they. One of the things that I really do like about it is because it's so portable, you can easily just take it to a sewing shop and you can go ahead and have it serviced. Um, and they really don't require a lot of oil. You would just have to make sure that you do your regular maintenance of cleaning out all the lint and everything in the areas where you know, um, where it sews and stuff like that. But, you know, other than that, it's, it's really, it's really cool. Now, another thing that I do want to caution you, like in the beginning of this video, when we we're talking about price, I mentioned to you that some of these machines, they can be very, very affordable, especially if you're looking at the machines that are four by four or five by sevens. These flatbed machines do come with the capability to embroider on large large um, hoops as well, just like an 8x13 and stuff like that. Now, those machines are a little more on the expensive end, okay? And, you know, but they do have a lot more functionality as well. And, you know, again, a lot of people like those single um single needle flat beds machines because they don't take up a lot of space. And um, depending on what it is that you embroider, um, it could probably work for you. So, you know, don't discount flat machines. A lot of times people look at these flat bed machines and they're like, oh, it's just to start with. And, um, you know, that's all it is. I'm like, nope, that's not true. I mean, if you were to go to the sewing shop and you were to ask them, hey, can I take a look? at one of your embroidery machines that have the eight by 13 hoops, you'd be surprised at some of the great functionality that some of those machines bring to the table. I mean, really awesome. There is a reason why they're on the market and there is a reason why a lot of people do actually purchase these machines. So it wouldn't hurt to check it out because you could end up finding out that maybe a flatbed machine is really 
really will suit your needs for what it is that you're looking to do, okay? So now let's walk over and let's talk about the multi-needle machine, which I have right next. So I am going to uh, turn the camera around, okay, so that you guys can see and we can talk about it. Okay, so now let's talk about multi-needle machines. Now, one of the things that I tell people right off the bat, multi-needle machines are not cheap at all all okay you are not gonna find these in the hundred dollar ranges okay they're more on the thousand thousands of dollar ranges and it also depends on what it is that you you end up getting okay you can get a multi-needle machine with something that is um maybe like six needles which is this one that i have right here okay or you can get something with 10 needles, you can get something with 15 needles, and I think they even go up to all the way to 20, okay? Now, these machines are very pricey, and a lot of times the companies, what they do is they will offer folks um, financing um, opportunities. Sometimes they'll do the 0% interest and stuff like that. So that's something that you gotta, you gotta um, look at and you have to think about your budget and all that kind of stuff, okay? Now, the thing that I forgot to mention about the single needle machine versus the multi-needle machine is even though the single needle machine has one, one needle, what that actually means is that you can only embroider one, one color at a time, okay? As for the multi-needle machine, what it is is you're only you only have one needle embroidering just like the single needle but the difference between the multi needle and the single needle is that each of these needles you can actually thread it with a different color so what will happen is it actually it actually does the embroidery the same as the single needle but you don't have to babysit the machine because what happens is that when it's time for you to embroider the next color, the machine will shift over to the needle that's assigned that color and it's gonna continue to embroider. As for if you have the single needle machine, you're gonna be sitting at the machine and then what'll happen is when it's, you know, when it's done, um, stitching out one color, then it's going to stop and then you have to re-thread the machine with the next color and then press go and then have the um the design you know the machine complete the embroidering of that design so that is really the big difference a lot of times you know people kind of think oh you know they have this misperception that they think that a whole bunch of needles are embroidering at the same time no you are still embroidering one needle at a time the real big difference is that you have already assigned a color per needle. So when you start to embroider, what'll happen is it'll start embroidering the color white and then it'll go embroider the color black and red and blue and so on to whatever, whatever color you put on here, okay? Now, the other thing about multi-needle machines is they are more complex machines. Now, I'm not saying that they are so super hard, you can't learn them. You can learn them. Um, I have been using multi-needle machines for quite some time now. Um, to me, I did not find the learning curve to be a big deal. Um, but just know there is a lot more moving parts. And because there's a lot more moving parts, you know, it's just different. It's not like a regular sewing machine, okay? And these multi-needle machines only do one thing, and that's embroider. They don't sell. However, though, people have been known to buy certain embroidery files that have like quilt patterns and stuff like that. And they do have certain things out there like in the hoop um, designs where you can actually make bags and make, uh, you know, little, you know, um, projects inside a... Um, you know in in a just you know using an embroidery machine but those in the hoop projects you can actually do them on a on a flatbed machine too on a single needle machine too you don't these are not things that you have to have a multi-needle machine to do now what is really the big difference to me between a single needle and a multi-needle i'll show you right now it's this arm that to me is really the juice 
that really makes the multi needle machine really kind of stand out between a flatbed machine. A flatbed machine, like we were saying before, it has that flat surface. So sometimes it'll make things a little difficult to embroider. Because this has this arm, okay, it's going to be a lot easier for you to hoop bags, okay, hoop shirts, and things that, you know, you can just let it just lay out and it'll just embroider on this flat surface, okay? So um, if you watch some of my videos and you see how I embroider like laptop cases, um, they have different types of hoops and frames that you can purchase with your multi-needle machine to make embroidering certain items much easier, like laptop cases, like bags, duffel bags, even shirts, and all, and all kinds of stuff. If you have an item that is pretty easy to hoop, like let's say you have a business of just selling um, kitchen towels and dinner napkins. To be honest, a flatbed machine would work just as well, but it really just also depends on how fast do you have to, you know, push those products out, okay? Because speed can be an issue. These multi-needle machines are faster okay um they sometimes go as fast as a thousand stitches per minute and they can actually go up to 1500 stitches per minute and i think they might have some that actually go faster i'm not sure um but these are the home um based uh you know embroidery machines that i have they do have commercial machines out there where they have the arm that is probably a little slimmer and um you know sometimes they they have you know little different functionality and stuff and that's the other thing too that you have to look at when you are looking at not just the single needle machines but the multi needle machines as well the functionality okay does it does it scan do you need additional software do you need additional external equipment like a laptop or something like that what is the operating system that the machine is going to work on my biggest thing always is the support okay that is one thing that i always tell people especially if you are looking to buy a multi needle machine because of the cost being so high of owning one of these machines, it to me, I always compare it to like buying a car. And the thing is that a lot of times people come on and say, well, this brand is really great. Well, that's awesome. But the thing is, ask yourself the question, is this machine going to be working as good as today as it is going to be working within 10 or or maybe 15 years from now okay and what type of support are you going to be getting with that type of machine so one of the things that i always tell people whenever they ask me because i don't really recommend any type of brand to anyone because every type of embroidery company has its own pacific flavor when it comes to embroidery okay they have their own functions and all that kind of stuff and it's like you know you really have to take a look at all of the machines and see what they offer what can you do with these machines is it something that you know you can use today and is it something that maybe can grow with you in the future as well and also ask about the support. The support is so important. A lot of times when you buy something new, you're going to get a lot of help in the beginning, especially when you're in the in the process of actually purchasing it, okay? Cuz you're going to want, you know, you got to remember people want to make that sale. They want to sell you this machine. So they're going to tell you, you know, what you kind of want to hear, I guess, you know. So the thing is, you really have to do your research. And that is one thing that I really strongly recommend. Talk to people that didn't just buy the machine, but have owned the machine for a couple of years. Ask them about repair of that machine, you know, what went wrong with it? How did were they able to get support to getting the 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 equipment repair how much did it cost them okay because you got to remember you know people you know it's not that the companies don't want to support people it's just you can't do it free all the time right or some maybe some companies do offer it for free i don't know but what i'm saying is you want to have all that information up front when you are purchasing your machine because you don't want to be blindsided okay 
And also you want to find out how fast you can get something fixed as well. You know, do they have one, someone that's local that you can call and set up appointments so they can come quickly? Because especially if you're using a multi-unit machine to run your business, the last thing you want to do is for your machine to go down at your busiest time. When you're in the middle of working on a big order or maybe, you know, this is the season, like Christmas is coming up right now. And if something happens to one of these machines while you are trying to fill all these orders that are coming in, that's stressful. So you want to make sure that you can get the support that you need when you need it. So guys, this is just a video, a quick video that I wanted to put out there for all you guys out there that are looking at embroidery machines and have questions and concerns about all of them. You know, um, you know, because I get this question a lot. They're like, oh my God, what do you recommend? Like I said, I recommend you do your research and you do it thoroughly. Talk to people and talk to people that own them. And please try not to... And I'm not saying, you know, well, I don't want to say don't talk to them. But what I'm saying is always know who you're talking to as well. You got to remember some people, you know, they are sponsored by certain companies. And a lot of times what they, you know, they, they can't say anything to you if something is going wrong with their machine. You don't know that, right? So sometimes you really have to watch where you're getting your information from okay so one of the things that i like to do is i like to people that have no bite in the game you know i mean they use their own money to purchase their own equipment they did not get anything free they don't you know they don't go around and um and push the products or anything they're just a regular customer who have used it and i'm talking about talking to someone who didn't just buy the machine i'm talking about somebody who has owned the machine for more than five years you know that to me would be a great resource to use to get an opinion um you know so that you can get information about repairs support um you know how has the machine grown with them and their business um, you know, the type of, of quality of stitches and stuff, and even ask if you can try out the machine. Another thing that I recommend too is when you go, you know, when they have these expos where all these different brands of machines go out there, go there, visit them, talk to them. I'm not saying, you know, but understand they are salespeople and stuff. But the thing is, it is a good place for you to at least start gathering information about the types of you know financing that they have available and also talk you know to talk to them about the new machines because you got to remember also when you get the advice of someone who has owned the machine for quite some time okay i am sure that since they bought their machine they may have a new line of machines okay because a lot of these companies what they do is they upgrade their machines they make their machines better faster more efficient and stuff like that so they might not have the latest model that they're using so when you're talking to them and you're asking them questions you're really asking more so it's uh, about like the support that you're gonna get the reliability you know more you're kind of more trying to get information on the company's reputation and how it treats its customers okay when you go and you meet with the salespeople at these expos and stuff what you're trying to do is gather the information of the latest lines that they have and you know at these expos they don't just have representatives for the single needles they have them for I mean, for the single needles and the multi needles, okay? I recently went to a show and quilt expo, expo, and they had multi and single needle machines on the floor. And that was like the most awesome opportunity for anyone who is in the market to actually go. You got to go in front of the machine. You got to sit in front of it. You got to try it out. You got to ask all the questions and stuff like that. That is really, to me, the golden place to get all the newest and greatest information about any type of machine that you're thinking about getting. So guys, 
that is it for this video and i hope you like it i just wanted to do a quick one for you if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you like all the information that i share i i definitely do share more i host embroidery happy hour every friday at eight o'clock eastern standard time you are so welcome to join us and i hope you do and i hope you hit that subscribe button and i will see you later and have fun and um sewing and have fun embroidering talk to you guys later Bye.